Hey guys, this is MJ. Who's truly hope you're all having an amazing Sunday today. Um, today is our journaling day and we are on the letter J, J for journaling, J for Jesus, uh, J for joy, J for justified, J for judge, J for justice. Um, J.D. Farag. <laughs> if you have not been to uh, traditional brick and mortar church today, um, we listen to J.D. Farag. Uh, he is a Calvary Chapel pastor out of Hawaii. J.D. F-A-R-A-G dot org. Haven't heard him today yet. Alan is at work. But you know what? We found a Calvary Chapel church here in Panama City Beach. And um, what a blessing, what a blessing. So um, if you're in Panama City Beach area, there is a Calvary Chapel um, church. They do chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Um, so it is a blessing. All right, I am gonna share a little bit from my Poetic Justice. I, don't, I have so much stuff here, guys, to share. Just so much stuff. Uh, you know me, a little here, a little there. Um, wanna first share from my poetic justice. Just a child, J for just a child. I am just a child, yet you frighten me with your rage. Just a child, fragile and helpless, unable to turn my own page. I am just a child, yet I internalize all this blame. I walk around lost and confused, hanging my head in shame. I am just a child, please don't charge me for what I don't know, because I'll charge my own innocent children one day and your seeds of hate will continue to grow. Jesus took the full punishment for the hatred I see in your eyes. One day soon I will grow up and expose his hidden disguise. Your curse of silence will be broken throughout the pages of a book. Innocent prisoners of the past will open it and curiously take a look. Yes, there is a final authority in this home that my eyes have yet to see. One day soon I will meet him and from this struggle, Jesus Christ will set me free. Some of our struggles are worse than others, greater than others. But he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. And Romans 8, 28, my favorite scripture, God causes all things to work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. All things not some things, even this, fill in your own blank. Matthew 19, 14, but Jesus said, let the little children come unto me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. And that is from My Poetic Justice. So on our journaling days, you know, and I encourage you guys also, it's not just for girls. Um, when I was a nurse in drug rehab, um, the guys would say, oh, you know, this is a girl thing. Let's just, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and sit this out. But I've seen grown man, men cry um, at watching the Holy Spirit ex bring up and expose the things, the hidden things that the enemy doesn't want you to see. Um, the hidden things that we keep um, in the cellar of our souls. Um, and it's the subconscious thing sometimes, you know, that... Uh, through writing, we get that liberty. You know, just committing to write 10, 15 minutes a day, sit with the Lord, um, you know, have your journal, have your Bible there, and just be still. Empty yourself of everything. You know, we have to empty ourselves. I used to come to the Lord and just give him all of my prayers and, you know, tell him everything that he already knows. Um, you know, just bring my wheelbarrow full of troubles and, you know, tell him everything that all my prayer requests, I'd bring all that stuff to him. And then in Jesus name, amen. And I was done. Well, then he started to show me that, you know what? I cannot fill you if you don't come to me empty. So we have to come to him empty. Of course, he wants to hear, you know, uh, our prayer requests. Of course, he wants us to come and, you know, um, he knows what we need before we even ask. He knows every hair on our head. So I've learned to come to him empty so that he can fill me. So that's just a tip that's taken me many, many years to learn. So um, 
J is for Jesus. J is for justification. We are justified, just as if I'd never sinned. One of my subscribers, that's her word for, um, that's going to be her J word, justified. And thank God, you know, our sins, past, present, and future are forgiven under that blood. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to share the gospel first um, before I go into any of this. Because if you're not born again, if you're not saved, um, this is just a little housekeeping. Because if you're not in the house, this is the most important thing that you will hear in this entire video. Um, Jesus said we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that the only way to the Father is through the Son. What does that mean? That means that the wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into this world to condemn this world, but that through him we might all be saved. But not all of us will be saved. Um, a lot of us will believe the liar's lie, unfortunately. There is a devil um, Satan is a liar. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. And he does what he does well. He is a liar. He plants seeds of doubt in our mind. And even those of us who are born again, um, who have left the traditional brick and mortar church and have wandered, not all who wander are lost. Once we're born again, we are born again, adopted into God's very own family. God does not abort us. He does not throw us away. Um, we wander out there in the world, and we know that we don't belong out there. Um, there's something inside of us telling us that something, that someone is the Holy Spirit. And he's telling us, you don't belong here. You know you don't belong here. But we haven't acquired enough the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So we haven't been discipled in the church. The church, I believe, has failed at discipling. You know, um, they like to, you know, share the gospel, share the gospel, get people saved, saved, saved. But in the discipling aspect, um, once we are saved, born again, that's our birthday. That's our spiritual birthday. It's a one and done. We are spiritual born again. We are adopted into God's very own family. We become sons and daughters of God. Everyone in this world is a creation of God. We are not all sons and daughters of God until we say yes to Jesus Christ. At that moment, we become sons and daughters of God. And God does not throw away what he has formerly breathed life into. I like to, you know, use the example of a woman given physical birth. She does not, she cannot even physically, it's physically impossible to put that child back in her womb. And it is the same thing with God the Father. He does not and will not um, abort his own children once he has breathed life into us. Um, but because of lack of knowledge, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Many prodigals are out there wandering. Not all who wander are lost. So, um, but if you're not born again, it is imperative that you in this very late hour get born again because the rapture of the church could happen before this video is even over. Um, what is the rapture of the church? That is when that trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ rise first, and we, this final generation, I believe with all of my heart, who are alive and remain, will be caught up with them together in the clouds to meet our Lord in the air and ever so be with him. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words, encourage one another as we see the day approaching. And guys, it is obvious that that day is approaching. It is very obvious to those of us who have eyes to see. And those who don't have eyes to see are spiritually blind, just like a blind person is blind. We cannot blame a blind person for being blind. And we cannot blame a spiritually blind person for being spiritually blind. They cannot see what's going on all around them because they cannot spiritually discern the times. So if that's you and you're not born again, the Bible says the wages of our sin is death, eternal separation from a God who loves us. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So what do we do? How do we get there? God made it as simple as the ABCs. Religion complicates it. Ugh, this is not about religion. This channel is 100% pre-trib, just so you know, that is before the seven-year tribulation, that trumpet's going to sound. And that could happen at any second. Nothing needs to happen prior to that. Okay, and um, so 
you just simply accept, admit, hey, I'm a sinner in need of a savior, okay? Um, Jesus, there is only one way to the Father, and that is through the Son. It's not Buddha, it's not Muhammad, it's not Allah, it's not the prayers of your ancestors. Fill in your own blank. Um, one way to the Father. And if if I guarantee you, if there's a thousand ways it, it promised, there's thousand ways, thousand routes to get home, but there's only one promised way to get there alive. You know what dummy is not going to take that one way that you're going to get there alive. Okay, so um, heaven and hell. There is a literal heaven and there is a literal hell. Um, you simply believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Um, for your own forgiveness of your own personal sins and see call upon his name the bible says that all who call upon the name of the lord will be saved it is very simple god did not complicate this guys religion complicates it this is not about religion okay this is not about religion it's about a personal relationship with jesus christ and the only god that loves you enough to send his son to this earth wrapped in human flesh to live 33 years um, die on a cross, um, resurrect on the third day, and is currently seated at the right hand of the Father and is imminently coming back to rapture his church, the bride of Christ. And we will be with him those seven years while the most horrific time here on earth will take place called the seven-year tribulation. And that seven-year tribulation is not for us, the church. It is the 70th week of Daniel, or the time of Jacob's trouble, it is called, which is Israel. And we know that Israel is currently surrounded by her enemies. Um, it is called the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob is Israel. It is not called the time of the church's trouble. The church is not appointed to wrath. Jesus Christ took 100% of our wrath on that cross. Just to clear that up. We are justified, just as if I'd never sinned. All right, J for justified. The message of the gospel is that through faith in Jesus Christ, J for Jesus, thank God for Jesus, we have forgiveness of our sins and stand before God in the righteousness of Christ. Just as righteous as if we had never sinned. Justified, just as if I'd never sinned. That is the truth of justification, being declared not guilty, innocent before God's judgment seat because of the righteousness and sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. That is our standing if we are in Jesus Christ, if we are born again. And that's the only type of Christian there is, is a born again Christian. There are Christians who say they're Christians just because you sit in a garage, it doesn't make you a car. Um, you know, you've heard that illustration. There will be people who come to Christ or, or they will say, Lord, Lord, you know, we've done all these things in your name and we've cast out demons in your name and we've you know, taught Sunday school for 50 years, whatever, fill in the blank. And he will have to say, sadly, depart from me. I never knew you. And why is that? Because their sins are not covered by his blood. They are not justified, just as if I'd never sinned. Okay, and it's very simple. The ABCs of salvation are very simple. Simple as a child could understand them. God didn't make it hard, guys. Okay, so um, in 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 15, the Bible says, for no other foundation can be laid that is laid, which is in Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Some believers become so carnal and so far away from the fellowship with God that they may die before their time. And I believe that's exactly what happened to my best friend, Susie. Um, as many of you have heard, um, my old time subscribers, my, my long time subscribers, my best friend was murdered. Um, and um, I know that I'm going to see her in that air. I know that I'm going to see her in the air. Um, and a lot of people lose their lives. They did not lose their salvation. Okay, understand that. Um, 
Salvation is a gift. A gift. God does not retract that. Please understand that. All right. So uh, some believers, but yeah, okay, I read that. Instead of allowing us to cause more shame to the people of God and do more harm to the church and the testimony of God's people, God decides it's best that their life ends abruptly and prematurely. In 1 John 5, 16, the Apostle Paul said, There is a sin unto death because the Lord is the judge. That is why there will be um, surprises in heaven, guys. There will be some people in heaven that no one thought would be there. And there will be others that everyone thought would be there. Of course, pastors, people anticipated would be there, won't be there. Um, because Jesus, those will be the ones that say, I've done all these things in your name. And I've helped good, I've been a good person. I fill in the blank. But he will have to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Um, some believers have had reputations among men as being strong believers, um, you know, but never knew the Lord. All right. So, so understand that our salvation is a gift. We cannot lose it. All right. So there are people behind the pulpit that say you can lose it. You know, Satan has his own ministers of righteousness, righteousness, the Bible calls it, um, God, when he gives us a gift, it is the gift of salvation. Salvation is a birthday. Everything after that is our walk. So journaling is an act of worship to me. I think journaling is like worship. It has become one of God's greatest tools in exposing and illuminating those areas of my soul, challenging my liberty in Christ. And how many of us know that we can have our liberty in Christ challenged? Um, the Bible says that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. But how many of us have struggled with that freedom? I know I, for one, have. Um, God promises that if we seek him with all of our hearts, we will find him. You know, and journaling has primed the pump for me. You know, I mean, just making a commitment to journal. Um, and only when we become willing to be completely honest and transparent with God does that healing begin to gush forth. Um, through journaling, I discovered that underneath the wreckage of my life's um, poor choices and unfortunate events lay an unopened treasure chest containing a fountain of truth that I sadly, sadly neglected. You know, um, once we get rid of this stuff, you know, the, the trauma and the rejection and you know, all of those roots, every tree has a root, um, you know, all of those abandonment issues and all of this stuff that causes us to, you know, all the triggers, okay, all the triggers. Um, once that we, you know, get rid of all that stuff, there lays a buried treasure box and um, that has much greater value than we could ever imagine. And our Savior patiently waits and humbly waits, anticipating the day that we recognize our need for further intervention. He stands there and patiently knocks. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And um, because some of us have more stubborn souls than others, and mine was very stubborn, and I regret that I waited so long to open up that door. It didn't mean I wasn't saved, I was saved. But it just wasn't relevant. You know, it wasn't relevant to dig further. It wasn't relevant to allow the Holy Spirit to go there. Um, but it's a purging process, okay? It's a purging process. And um, you just open a door and find out for yourself. Open that journal. And um, it's a journey. You know, it's a journey. It's between you and the Lord. It's a journey between you and the Lord. And... Um, know that he will never leave us nor forsake us. You know, some of us have issues with perfectionism. You know, some of us um, have issues with fill in your own blank. You know, whatever your issue is, God has the answer to it, thankfully. Um, there's no amount of sinning or less sinning that's going to get us into heaven. Once we put our faith in Jesus, we are forgiven of all our sins and receive a new spiritual life and no amount of sin can take it away. Or like I said, salvation is a birthday. 
And the enemy likes to deceive people and lie to people and say, oh, you lost your salvation on this. And I'm not advocating for sinning here because sin will bring us to our knees. Um, the Bible says that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, okay? Um, unfortunately, religion has a way of robbing um, our true freedom in Christ by putting all these stipulations on it and stuff. Remember that God's gift is just that. It's a gift. It's a gift. Um, and God made a promise to all of us that believe that he would remember our sins no more and he wiped them clean. He declared that even if we're faithless, he remains faithful. And... Um, you know, that's Jesus' promise to the Father, that all that the Father gave him, he would bring back to the Father. So that is Jesus' covenant to the Father. We can't keep that covenant. At the moment of salvation, the Holy Spirit moves in to our temple, to this unworthy temple, and takes up residence, becomes our counselor, our guide, our best friend. Um, he seals us until the day of redemption, understands that we're sealed. We can't become unsealed. Understand that. So you know the Gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, that he was, that he was buried and on the third day rose again according to Scripture. That is the simple gospel of our salvation. Don't complicate it. We are all born this way. We are all born dead in our sins. And until we're born again, born again into what? born again into Christ's righteousness. It's not even our own righteousness, guys. We can't even claim that righteousness for ourselves. Our own righteousness is as filthy rags. It is Christ's righteousness and Christ's righteousness always. That is what being born again is. Being born again into his righteousness. Understand that. Um, we're saved by grace alone through faith alone. If you don't know any other scriptures, know this. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And we're not going through the tribulation. We're not in the tribulation now. The church is not appointed to wrath. Every bit of that wrath, Jesus Christ took on the cross. So understand that. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, but God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And Romans 5, 6 through 11, since we have now been justified, J, just as if I'd never sinned, by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? I mean, we're justified, just as if I'd never sinned. All right, so um, so I wanted to share a few things with you guys, some interesting things. Um, I don't know if you all have heard of um, this channel. Um, gosh, what is it now? Uh, let me see, I wrote it down. Somebody, somebody on my channel encouraged me to George, the return of the king. The return of the king is his channel. Um, so I just listened to a few of his videos were kind of mind blowing. But, um, you know, uh, you know, I shared about, you know, what's going to happen in April uh, in, in the last uh, probably two videos ago. Um, but what's going to happen, uh, well, you know, Homer Simpson, and I don't watch the Simpsons by the way, but, uh, Homer Simpson's predicted, uh, the rapture on March 18th, on March 18th. I believe it is March 18th or March 19th. He changed it to March 19th. It's called, thank God it's doomsday. But anyway, at 3 15 PM, now, you know what went, none of us know, but I thought something that was pretty funny is that, um, there was a whale being carried by a helicopter. Now, you know, the eclipse 
is under the constellation. Um, you know, this is called the sign of Jonah, April 8th. Well, it's under this, is it CECUS or CECUS or whatever it is? I did the um, video the other day, but um, which I found to be very interesting um, under the sign of the whale, which is Jonah. Well, this crazy thing, Homer Simpson, um, there was a whale being carried by a helicopter. Now, is that relevant? I don't know, but I just thought that was pretty crazy. Very crazy. It's called Thank God is Doomsday. I mean, that is that is just crazy. Yeah, uh, I don't watch The Simpsons. But okay, so... Uh, yeah. You know, I wonder too, um, you know, when God closed the ark, the Bible says that when God, um, you know, the Bible says, as is in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man, you know, when the rapture happens. And I um, wonder if when God closed the door of the ark, if there was a sound that was like heard throughout all of the earth then, you know, you know, of him shutting the door because they had been, Noah had told them and told them and told them and preached to them. You know, he was a preacher of righteousness and that trumpet's about the sound, guys. And we'll either be in Christ going to the wedding or we'll be left behind wondering what just happened. Like Homer Simpson says, left below. <laughs> Yeah, I did look at that episode because it was just kind of freaky that it was a a whale being carried by a helicopter. Um, I thought that was unusual. But yeah, it's coming up, guys. A, a lot of things that just can't be coincidence. Now, am I saying that the rapture is going to happen on that day? Um, no, I don't know that. I know that the rapture is imminent. Imminent means it can happen at any moment before this video is even over. And we are longing, watching and waiting for the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there is even a crown awaiting those of us who are watching and waiting. Lift up your heads and look up for your redemption draws an eye. Um, Jesus told us to watch and wait. Jesus told us that all of these things would be happening as a woman in labor. This is not climate change what's happening in this world. This is nothing to do with climate change. All of these fires, everything that's going on right now, do you think this is all coincidence? This is convergence. This is labor. And having had three children of my own, I can promise you labor does not reverse. Contractions do not reverse. Um, they get exponentially increase in in frequency um, until the baby comes. We are at that place, the ring of fire, as I have done videos on before, um, where the baby's head is crowning and that pain, the worst pain that you feel in labor. Um, the Lord showed me that that ring of fire is like right where we're at. We're right there, guys. We're right there. Don't lose hope. Don't be disheartened. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Trust in him. Um, don't be discouraged. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to be reading this something called the Gospel in the Stars. I don't know if any of you have read that. Um, but I'm going to be reading that because um, this guy, George, in The Return of the King, had, had mentioned it in his video. And I've never been into astronomy much, but the Lord did show me, uh, you know, that vision um, that I shared with y'all of the American flag burning. And behind that was the dragon and just some other things. But this George in The Return of the King... Um, was talking about the ring of fire actually and the lord showed me that also but 
And I wonder why the Lord shows me this stuff because I don't know a thing about this stuff. I guess because he knows that I'll, I have a big mouth and I'll, I'll, I'll tell, you know, um, and I'll share it. But all of these things are converging, guys. And could it be April 8th? Could, it'll, it could be before then, guys. It could be before this video is over. So for this reason, we have to be prepared. How do you be prepared? Be born again. Okay, that's simple, to be born again. Jesus said you must be born again to enter in the kingdom of heaven. And all these people that are talking about um, partial raptures and only the people who are looking and watching and waiting for the rapture are going to be raptured, that's a lie. All right? Jesus Christ is going to rapture his entire body, the bride of Christ. Okay, because some people don't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. They believe, you know, that we have to go through the tribulation. But they do believe, um, you know, the gospel. They they believe as we believe. They just believe that we have to go through the tribulation, which I don't believe to be truth. And I don't believe that is scriptural. But I'm sure they're not going to be disappointed whenever we're raptured. So um, that's not true that there's going to be a partial rapture. And only the people that are watching and waiting are going to be raptured so there's a lot of lies floating out there that we have to go through the tri uh, tribulation and, and all this other stuff um so yeah j is for jesus j is for the lion of the tribe of judah j is for jerusalem j is for jehovah j is for joy j is for justice so this week we will be on the letter J. So what you do is you just, whatever the Lord gives you, just sit and whatever your word is, you know, look up the, that word in scripture, you know, justified, joy, write down those scriptures and you will be blessed. You will be blessed beyond anything you can ask, think, or ever hope. And, you know, God speaks to us individually. He speaks to us that word speaks to us individually. You know, the Bible is the only book that is alive. It is the only book that is living. Okay. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. All right. So when we open up that word, Jesus speaks to us individually. The Holy Spirit opens up that word to us. And whatever we're going through, he ministers life to us. So stay in the word and let the word stay in you, all right? Keep your armor on. The Bible says to keep your armor on. Know who you are in Christ. Um, that is very, very important in these last days That because um, the enemy tries to give us an image of who we are. And, um, you know, sometimes we take it and run with that. Understand who we are in Christ. Um we're in the last days, guys, and this is exciting. It's exciting. And we don't know if this is it. Whether it is or it's not, you know what? We're in Christ. We are already positionally seated at the right hand of the Father. So, you know, we're going up soon and very soon. And um, this should be a time that we are very excited we are very excited, um, stoked, you know, but the enemy has a way of trying to discourage us, trying to defeat us. Um, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Remember that greater is the army that is with us than the army that is against us. Please remember that. Please remember that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we are justified by his blood, just as if I'd never sinned. Okay. Um, please know that we're praying for you and yours. We're praying for your prodigal. And I appreciate, so appreciate you praying for my prodigal. Um, yeah, we walk by faith and not by sight. Don't look at what circumstances are because circumstances are irrelevant when it comes to God. Um, God allows everything that's going on. You know, uh, and anything that's happening has to pass through his hand first. And I can promise you that all things 
work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So whatever our prodigal goes through, and I can testify to this fact, everything that I went through, God has used it and used it and used it. He turns our ashes into beauty. Okay, so don't ever let the enemy shame you. Don't ever let there be any shame in your game. You know what? Um, God will use everything the enemy went, meant for harm and turn it into a glorious testimony. Um, watch and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I love you guys. Know that um, I'm praying. We're praying for you and yours. And um, until next time, keep looking up. Our redemption draws nigh. I love you guys.